going to show you how to make the magic mini scarf. And the reason why I call it the magic mini scarf is because it is small, um, but it is also magical because it, it comes together very fast and it is um, so incredibly easy to make and fast. You are going to absolutely love this scarf. I will have lots of pictures of the tons of the tons of different ways that you can style this scarf. So it's kind of like a mini shawl, scarf, whatever you want to call it. Um, so let me get you the measurements on it too. So this scarf is 35 inches across the top and it is approximately 15 inches from top to bottom depending on how stretchy it is it is a mesh pattern so it does it can stretch out even further than the 15 inches so um, this one was made with Karen sprinkle cakes by Yarnspirations and it was made in the colorway vanilla bean apparently this yarn is on closeout right now so it's actually on sale on their website so if you want to get it, you can get it at quite a discount. I think it's on sale for $4.99. And um, it is, I used almost a whole skein. Um, it's 100, sorry, it's 204 yards long. And I used almost the whole skein. So, but for today, uh, we're going to use a different yarn. Let me get that. During the course of filming, I had to take some time off to finish the shawl or the scarf. And during that time, I had um, some other time and I decided I would make this shawl in a couple more colors. This is um, this one is made with Red Heart Roll With It Melange in the colorway Curtain Call. And I really love this yarn, by the way, so definitely check that out. Um, it's actually very similar to the, the yarn that I use for my Land of the Fairies shawl, which um, I'll have a link to in the description below. But this colorway is kind of like fall colors. And I'm going to have some really delicious pictures at the end the lighting in here is really not capturing um, the beauty of this color. So we'll check that out at the end. I'll have some pictures. And then this one is also gorgeous. And I don't know if you can guess what yarn this is, but I'll tell you. <laughs> it's made with two strands of Ferris wheel. One is in wild violets and the other one is in pink marmalade and so I worked with two strands one from each cake and came up with this and again uh, wait till the end of the video and you will see a bunch of uh, photographs of these and how pretty they are so if you're looking for color you can make this in color as well so for each of these, I used the same crochet hook, a uh, nine millimeter. Uh, the Roll With It Melange is a worsted weight, a number four, and it is kind of a thin. So I was wanting to check and see um, how that turned out, you know, how lacy that would be. And I would say that if you're going to um, make it with the Roll With It Melange, you might want to do, instead of starting with 23 loops, you might want to start with 25 or more. So, but just check your your length uh, before you start on your second row. And then for this one, um, it was using two strands of Ferris wheel together. That probably got us to about a five weight. And again, also using the number nine uh, nine point zero millimeter hook. And that one came out with identical. Um, sizing as the number six yarn in both the um, the Heartland and the Karen cake. So that's 
what to watch out for with your um, with your hooks on use if you try to use these two different kinds of yarns. Before I get the yarn that we're going to be using for today's project, I just want to show you something else we're going to be making with this project, which is a lacing cord. And I'm going to be showing you a really cool way for making this lacing cord. Um, it's going to be used for some of the different styles that you can make. Um, and some of the other styles will use a um, will use uh, a shawl pin or you can use a large button toggle. Um, you'll need a large button that will go through and stay in these uh, mesh holes. And I have a tutorial on both making button toggles and also all different kinds of cords if you wanted to experiment with other types of um, crochet and knit cords. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to be using two skeins of Hometown USA by Lion Brand in the colorway Dallas Gray. Each of these is 81 yards, so we'll probably be using about 160 yards. If we need more, we'll get another skein. Um, this is a number six yarn, which also the the yarn that I used in the sample is um, the, the Karen Sprinkle Cakes is also a number six yarn. We're going to be using a nine millimeter crochet hook. I don't know if you can see that. I have the rubber band on the end because I also use this for Tunisian sometimes, Tunisian crochet. We're going to use a Susan Bates yarn needle. I like these the best. They're easy to thread and very easy to use. Scissors and a measuring tape. So um, when, when you do this project, it is basically a rectangle. And um, you can make yours larger or smaller. So the project is... Um, a rectangle and we are going to start with a really cool uh, foundation row where we end up making these kind of chained circles you'll see what I mean in a second and we make a total of 23 of them and 23 gets us to about 35 inches wide. Then in addition to this foundation row we do our our mesh rows and we do 22 rows of the mesh rows which I will be showing you and that ends up to be about 15 inches tall or high. Um, to give you an idea of what size you might want to make yours, uh, when I measure around my shoulders with a measuring tape, I measure 42 inches around the outside of my shoulders. My chest measures 38 inches. So chest. 38 shoulders, 42 inches. And you can see at the end of this video and probably a little bit at the beginning of the video, I'll have pictures of how, it, how this um, style fits on my body. Um, so if your body is smaller than mine or larger than mine, you can make yours a little wider you can make it a little taller or a little shorter. Okay, so what I like to do is show you a diagram before we start so that you know where we're going, uh, especially since this is a little unusual how we do the foundation row. We don't start with just a chain. What we do is we, of course, we'll start with a slip knot, um, but we're going to chain three 
And then we are going to do something called an extended single crochet. Then we chain three. And that extended single crochet goes into the, the first chain. Then we chain three and we do an extended single crochet into that first chain of the three. And we keep doing that 23 times. And that's how we start this. So it ends up making the this these loops and I'll show you that when I demonstrate it. Um, and then when we get to the end for row two, when we get here, we are going to chain three. Oh, actually, let me switch colors here to show you this. We're going for row two, we're going to chain three and we're going to do a single crochet into this circle here. This is basically a circle. Each of these are like loops. They're kind of like, they're kind of like this, sort of, you'll see. Uh, and then we just keep doing the same mesh of chain three and single crochet into the the circle all the way across and when we get to the very last one we do our single crochet into this second chain Then the next row after that is we basically start the same way, chain three, one, two, three, and we single crochet into this opening, chain three, single crochet into this opening, and so on. So then it's just, you just repeat that for 22 rows. and single crochet into the second chain from the previous row. So let's demonstrate that now. Okay, so that may have sounded weird, um, but I think you're gonna find that this is super easy. It's a really cool way to start a project, a, a mesh project. So we're gonna start with our slip knot, cross the working yarn over the tail and then pull the working yarn up through that loop, put it on your hook, the loop on your hook, and just tighten it up. And we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to do something called an extended single crochet into the first chain. So we're going to go into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, then we yarn over pull through just one, and then we yarn over pull through two. And you can see we've created this first loop. And we just do that again. Chain three. One, two, three. We go into the first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two. And we've created our second loop. So now you can see what I was talking about. Chain three, one, two, three. Go into the first chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, 
yarn over pull through two that's an extended single crochet so you're just going to do this until you have 23 of these loops and I'll meet you back at the end okay so now that you have um, all your 23 loops go ahead and measure it and see how long it is when I measured mine um, unstretched it was probably around 32 inches but it is going to stretch out to that 35 inches uh, wide so I'm going to stick with my 23 circles um, but if you want yours to be let's say 40 inches um, you know make a few extra and um, if you want it to be shorter make a few less remember it's going to be depending on the yarn that you're using and how tight you're crocheting it's going to it's going to stretch a little bit so let's go on to row two so we're here at the end we just finished this last loop and what we're going to do is we're going to chain three one two three and all our loops were facing down now what we're going to do is we're going to turn those loops up and we're just going to go into the very first circle and we're going to do a regular single crochet which is let me show that again a regular single crochet is we just go into the space yarn over pull up a loop and then yarn over pull through two loops then what we do is we chain three we go to the next loop go in there and do a single crochet yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two loops and we just continue in this way chain three single crochet into the next circle the next loop one two three go into the next circle single crochet and you know just keep just make sure that your chain is not twisting make sure that they're all you'll see this you'll see they all kind of have this um, little ridge here at the top of the loop so you'll be able to recognize that so go ahead all the way to the end when you get to the end I will meet you there and show you how we handle that end stitch okay so here I am I just did the second to last one I chained three and now for the very last stitch instead of just going right into the the circle we're just going to go into the second chain um, so that's going to be right here this is what this is going to do for us is it's going to ensure that we have a nice straight edge on the side so I'm going to do my single crochet right in there and then to start row three we start exactly the same way we chain three turn the work and then we're just going to go right into that first chain three with a single crochet and then another chain three and another single crochet into the next open space so if you look at where we started we started with these circles we went down to the end and we created another circle here another circle here and so on we're creating another circle here on the way back and you're just going to continue with this is basically this is row one is your foundation row row two is just repeated you just keep repeating that row two all the way and you're gonna make 22 you're gonna make 22 row twos you make 22 of those so I'll meet you back when we are finished with 22 of the mesh rows um, or you may do less or more it's up to you okay so I've just come to the end of row three this is the foundation row this was row two row three 
And I just wanted to show you um, the end of this row in case you have any questions about it because the last circle is usually a little smaller than the other ones that you're working into. It's always smaller. It's going to be it's going to be smaller than the the circles you're working into. So just make sure that you find that circle at the end and then you go into the second chain. So there's one and there's two. We have to do our three chains. And we're going to go into, there's our circle. We're going to go into one, two, the second chain. There's a total of three there. There's one, two, and there's three. We're going to go into the second one and do our single crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then we chain three. Turn the work and we single crochet into that first big loop. Okay, and you can see that when we come back again about this row again, there will be that small circle. And also on the other end, when we get to the other end, when we get to the other end, there will also be that smaller circle. Just remember to go into the second chain at the very outer edge. So I'm at the place where I need to add in a new yarn and I'm going to do uh, this knot. I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe it's called a magic knot, but um, I'm going to show you how to do it and you can do it that way if you like or some other joining way. It's up to you. So what you do is you take the two ends. It doesn't matter it's beginning or end it doesn't matter which goes on which side and you just line them up next to each other and then you put them on your first your pointer finger and you put your thumb on top and you have about that much sticking out you want them kind of close together and you take the yarn that's closest to you and you're going to wrap it around the top of your thumb. You're going to come behind those, behind those, and so between, it's coming down in between your two fingers and you're going to wrap it around a second time, kind of tight. Then you take the yarn and um, without pulling it over too tight I kind of you're gonna pull it over so that's under your thumb and you're gonna take these guys that are sticking up and you're gonna fold them down underneath your thumb now this takes a lot of practice it may not work <laughs> let's see if it works and then you're gonna hold it really tight and then you're gonna pull on this yarn and it didn't work, <laughs> which is good to show you it not working. So let's try it again. Wrap it around nice and tight. These need to stay nice and close together. You can almost twirl them. Take this over have it kind of almost sticking out here a little bit because you want these guys I'm just going to lick it to twirl it and you're going to squeeze that down under your thumb I don't think I got those down there let me try that one more time it's a little easier with thinner yarn than with this thick yarn Pull those in and then pull it tight and look at that it worked so um, I use these um, 
I don't mind having a little knot in there. It's usually not really very visible. If you don't like having knots, you can use a different join method, but I just wanted to show that to you. And these hold really tight. So now I've completed all of my rows, my 22 rows for um, the shawl in the Heartland yarn. And now I'm going to do some finishing on it. Um, at this point, if you want to, your, shawl, your scarf can be complete just as is. Uh, but if you would like, I'm going to show you how to add an edge along. So this was our this was our final row down here. And I don't feel that that needs finishing, but you can certainly go right ahead and finish on that edge as well with single crochets if you'd like, or any other kind of embellishment that you like. Um, on On the first one that I made, I did do um, a crochet, single crochet edge on the two sides and also on the starting edge. So the top edge and it just, I just like the, the, the V's. I just like that, that look. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So this was our starting row and then we worked back and forth. For 22 rows and what we're going to do now is let's say we finished here we're going to this was our last row that we did we're going to work along this edge doing single crochets and then along this edge and then along this edge and I'm going to leave this edge as is because I feel in my for, for me I, I like the look of it you as I said before can uh, make any embellishments or edging that you'd like on yours so let's take a look at that so roughly this is more of an art than an exact science um, for each of the rows there's going to be approximately two stitches on the side and in each of those you're just going to do a single crochet. So we're going to start by chaining one and I'm just going to go into this first stitch here, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's one single crochet. And then I'm just going to go into the next one and do a single crochet. And you're just kind of um, In some ways you're kind of eyeballing where the next stitch is. You can see the next one is right there. It may look a little confusing because it doesn't look exactly like when you are crocheting on a regular edge, but it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. This is, you're not going to get graded on this. There's nobody who's going to be inspecting it. Just so long as each stitch seems to match up with the space that you're going into, you should be all set. So you're just going to do this all along this short edge. I'm going to go all the way to the end. And I'm sorry, I was calling this yarn Heartland. It's actually hometown, so in Dallas Gray. So anyways, um, just keep going all the way to the end. I will say that in this yarn, uh, in order to keep it to the two skeins, I stopped at uh, row 21 instead of going all the way to row 22. Uh, the, the height of it was almost the same uh, as if I had done in another row. So if you're going to do it in this yarn and want to keep it to under two skeins, then um, you can do the same, just do 21 rows instead of 22. Or you can try and play yarn chicken um, and uh, you might make it, you might make an extra row. I'm just, I wasn't sure and I looked in my stash and I didn't have another skein of it and didn't have time to go out to the store either. So 21 it was. 
So we're almost here at the corner and I just want to show you that when you get to the corner what you're going to do is you're going to do three stitches into the corner stitch and the reason is so that you so that it has a nice um, corner to it. And here you've gotten to see me doing this side. Okay, so now we're at the corner stitch. Got a little tangle here. That's what yarn likes to do when you're making a video. Likes to be a little cheeky. Get into a little knot. So here we're at the corner stitch. I'm going to do one single crochet on this side one single crochet at the corner and one for starting the next edge and you can see I'm taking my original tail and I'm going to work that in as I go along my original long edge where we started and on this edge you're going to have three stitches is kind of the repeat. So there's one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Basically it's the same as, as when you're doing the side. Just um, look for the next opening and go in there. You can kind of see how I'm doing this. I try to get underneath two threads and keeping the tail in between so that it's getting worked in. I won't that's one more tail I won't have to sew in later. And then I'll meet you down at the next corner. Okay, so I'm at the corner opening and so I'm going to do one here. And then this is going to be my corner, so I'll do three there. So one, now one for this edge, one for the corner, and one for the new side. Okay, and then just going to go into the next side, one, and so on. So just keep looking for where it looks like you have an opening for your next stitch and make your stitch there. And I'll see you at the end. Okay, see it. So now I'm down at the final corner here and I'm just going to do one more here and then I'm just going to slip stitch into the first chain and I'm going to cut that yarn. sew that in. So let me show you how this looks. This is where we started. This is our bottom edge. This was our last row and you can see it already has a nice finished look to it. And then here's our side edge. There's our corner. Our top edge the next corner and our next side. So that is the shawl completed. So I hope that you liked this uh, video. I know that you're going to absolutely love this shawl and if you're like me you're probably going to make some, you're going to probably make at least two. <laughs> I've made four now and I've got actually plans to make a couple more because I've had um, a couple of uh, a friend and a family member ask for one so I'm going to be making more um, if you liked it please go ahead and 
like this video and please share it with your crochet friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I have new videos coming out every week with the Co Crochet Magical Mystery Tour. And don't forget to stay tuned for the pictures that are coming up here at the end where you can see really cool pictures of all of these different shawls, these different scarves in different colors and in different ways to style it. So, Okay, so this is how much yarn I have left. Just enough to make one of my um, cords that you're going to use, that you can use for lacing this shawl and I'm going to show you kind of a neat way to make this cord. Now the length of the cord is up to you um, and I have a video showing you multiple different ways how to make cords and I will have a link to that in the description below. Um, I also have a video on how to make a really cool uh, button toggle that you can use. For this you would need kind of large buttons. So, and I'm actually planning on making that myself. So, um, but the length I would say you might want to have it the about to be about the length of maybe one of the short sides. So maybe about 14 or 15 inches. So for this method that we're going to do you would want to um, use a length of cord that is going to be about three times that long. So this is the this is the cast on method. So I think I have enough here. So you're going to measure out about three or four times the length of how long you want it to be and make sure you have that amount on the other end as well. You're going to make a slip knot. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do this cool knitting cast on. And again, if you, I'll show you another way to do this as well. Okay, so this is one way. You're going to um, take one strand in this hand like this, and you take the other strand and you put it around your thumb. One goes around your first finger and one goes around your thumb. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your hook and you're going to go into this hole over here, pivot, and pick up a loop here. This is, this is one of the ways for casting on for knitting. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to slip stitch that. And then you just repeat that. So go over the first finger, over the thumb, go into this loop, grab this and pull it through the loop, and then pull it tight and then slip stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that. And you get a cord that's a little bit thicker than if you just uh, made a chain, a single chain. Like I said, I have a video on, on how to make a, many different kinds of these. I think this one might be included in there, but there's other ways to, to make cords. So you can see it kind of makes this, you have, you have V's and it's just kind of pretty looking. And when you get to the end, you just, um, you just pull the yarn through cut your yarn, pull it through, and then sew in your ends. Now another way that you could make cord is you could do the same thing. 
This is so that you have a nice thick cord. Make a slip knot. And then you just chain with two strands. So I grab my yarn like this. I hold on to the knot. And I'm going to pull those two strands through the loop on my hook and just keep, it's hard to do this when you have a camera in front of you, <laughs> and you just keep doing that. It's a little harder. You might want to have a little bit bigger hook or not have a camera in front of you while you're doing it. And you just make a nice thick chain like that. And that's a really nice way to do it too. So I'll have a, a link to the cords and I'll have a link to how to make the button toggles. And again, for this one, also just pull it through, cut your yarn, pull the yarn through, and sew in your ends. And once you have that done, I'll show you how you can lace it. Okay, so this is how much yarn I have left over after making my lacing cord. So definitely stop at row 21 if you're using the hometown yarn. So how to lace these guys. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. You could lace it um, along the short end and make a big a big tube, a big cowl. That's one way. Um, another way that I think works well is um, is not a full poncho because this is a little too short for that, but you can take maybe about half of a short edge and match it up against the, long, the opposite side of the long edge. So what you're going to end up having the look is going to be like this. Let me raise this up a little bit. So you can see, so you take about half of the short edge and match it against the opposite long end and you're just going to lace that together. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I put a piece of white paper under here to make it easier to see what's going on. So you have two choices. You can either um, lace it back and forth like you would do a shoe like that, or you can just weave it like this. So like if you're doing um, the, two, the two short edges together, you might want to just weave it um, so that you have enough so that you have enough cordage to do it. It would be like that. So, but for the short edge, let's do the lacing. So you just um, fold it in half, take your two ends, and put them in at opposite sides. Get them so that they're even and then you're just going to um, go back and forth and you can experiment with going over or under to see which way you like better bit more time you'll be able to figure out which way you like better and then when you get down to the end you can um, crisscross them and just just work it into the other side just find a place for that 
to go into like that. And I didn't sew in that tail yet, so. Um, and then we can just go up through here and down through here. And then that's kind of has a neat look to it. It's a nice kind of a woven look. So be sure to um, watch for the end for the pictures and you'll see some of this in the colorful ones as well. So to create the asymmetrical cowl look, what I've done is I've taken one end, fold it down, take the other end and fold it up. And then you are just going to take your lacing cord and crisscross them, lace them like you were lacing up a shoe to lace these two edges together. Okay, so here you can see um, that I've laced it along this edge here. I left this undone. Um, and this is what creates the look of the asymmetrical cowl. So you just um, you just lace it along this edge and uh, then once it's laced you fold it down this will be laced and and then you have your asymmetrical cowl, which you can wear these these points in either on the sides or front and back. You can make a giant cowl by taking the two short ends, putting them together, and then lacing them up this way. And now that it's laced up, you can just turn it inside out and wear it as a big giant cowl. Mm -hmm.